guests uh i'm back with my uh with my another video on rf i hope you enjoyed watching my first session on wi-fi wi-fi basics and if you liked it then please do subscribe to my channel this would add to my confidence and i will be charged to present more good technical stuff in future in my future videos so let's begin with previous session quiz question first okay so which organization is responsible for wi-fi device certification so the correct answer is wi-fi alliance and the second question which of the following 802.11 standards support both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz frequency so the only standard which support dual band radio is 802.11n so i hope uh, you uh, you are clear with these answers and now we will start with the today's session so our today agenda is uh, basics of rf uh, then rf characteristics like wavelength frequency amplitude and phase so uh, it's not very big uh, session today but i i will try to cover it where quickly because it's important to understand these basics before moving forward because we are going in a sequence and if you just follow the sequence and uh, look at the uh, cwna exam syllabus so it's very important you to understand these basic things i know all of you have already uh, gone through these things a lot in your uh, during your college time or or your initial days so uh, and, and you all know about wavelength frequency but still it is important because all our signaling interference co channel interference diffraction refraction there are a lot of things which all depend upon these basics of rf so let's begin uh, our today's session so rf known as radio frequency the electromagnetic spectrum which is usually referred to as spectrum is the range of all possible electromagnetic radiations radio waves are electromagnetic waves occurring on the radio frequency portion of the electromagnetic spectrum so it's a very uh, i mean technical terminology which i have just uh, explained right now the um, to understand rf we need to understand the four basic characteristics of rf which are wavelength amplitude frequency and phase so in wavelength i i i will uh, show you through one simulator so this is the link of that simulator http amanim szia lab.org so it's a free of cost you can download it and execute it then once you execute it it will uh, open this simulator so this is the simulator now what i will do i will create a one wave so one wave is initiated here you can see so what i will do to explain you about the i take a snapshot of this wave so this point to this point the distance between these two point is called wavelength so wavelength wavelength a distance between two successive crests or troughs so wavelength is the distance between like it starts from here it goes oscillate and it again comes to this point so distance between these two point is called wavelength or you can start from here and then here this is wavelength the height or peak the height or peak of the or power of the wave is called amplitude of the wave the amount of energy or power in a wave is called amplitude of the wave so this is the amplitude of the wave now i is take an example i assume that from here to oscillate till here it take 1 second so the amount of oscillations happened in 1 second is called frequency frequency it is the amount of time that wave oscillate in 1 second so there could be a higher frequency lower frequency in technical terms frequency is inversely proportional to the wavelength if 
if you have a higher wavelength then frequency would be a very low if you have a lower wavelength then frequency will be high so let me show you here in a simulator what i mean to say inversely proportional and all this so let's see i increase increase the wavelength so when i increase the wavelength you can see that frequency of oscillation decreases the wave size increases the frequency of oscillation decreases so that at the same time if i increases the uh, decreases the wavelength frequency increases uh, in at hugely so wavelength and frequency are inversely proportional to each other the higher the wavelength is it travels a larger distance so what 2.4 gigahertz frequency travels uh, wave uh, frequency is lesser than 5 gigahertz so it travels more distance than 5 gigahertz okay the higher the frequency is the lower the interference it is we will discuss in detail on various factors of this in uh, later videos so first of all this is very basic rf characters which we need to be understand before going forward it is generally said that uh, that it is often thought that higher frequency signals with the smaller wavelength will attenuate faster that it gets attenuated over the uh, distance in actually it's not a frequency and uh, uh, wavelength that get attenuated it's actually the distance the main cause of attenuation is distance because of distance there are huge amount of losses in between the distance like there are free spa space path losses refraction diffraction reflection there are a lot of things which we will discuss in later videos that led to the attenuation with the attenuation amplitude decreases so when you transmit some some energy or some wave from one tra transmitter to receiver there is a minimum threshold which should be get received at receiver end so that it can be uh, i'm uh, interpreted perfectly else it will be uh, it will be discarded that if it goes below that threshold so because of distance attenuation that amplitude decreases and the uh, uh, at the receiver and the received signal is not correctly received and it is discarded so these are the three major characteristics which we learned which we understand now um, frequency wavelength and amplitude now fourth is wave uh, phase actually uh, if i w if if we can say that phase 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 involves the relationship actually it's not a single wave property it's a it involves the relationship between two or more signals that share the same frequency so when i say it involves the relationship between two or more waves so let's see there are two waves both these waves right now exam for example these waves are there is no phase difference between these two waves okay so you see that okay wave uh, red wave when i red wave when i enable wave 2 it it both are uh, you can see only one wave both gets engrossed on each other so you would not be able to see the other because they are in same phase same wavelength same amplitude and at the receiver end the amplitude increase significantly because it's, it's a constructive gain the signal received at the receiver end increases because there are two waves with the same frequ uh, frequency wavelength and amplitude is going to receive at the receiver end but this is only a hypothetical uh, scenario in actual or real life scenario this would never happen so the constructive gain is there are very very rare chances that it would ever happen or even if it happen it is up to some limit only it would not happen like that that it is a completely engrossed over each other so like for example if you see there is, as i increase started increasing phase difference the receiving amplitude is uh, start decreasing if i go to 180 degree you can see that it becomes destructive that at the receiver end signal is totally destructive now and you would uh, the nothing will receive at the receiving end now it's out of phase earlier one is in phase because of uh, two waves uh, jointly become a single and uh, at the receiver end gain has been increased exp uh, exponentially at the same end when it goes out of phase the they uh, destructively join together and decreases the amplitude so the phase 
it's very important you will see in later se uh, sections how phase amplitude frequency all these things jointly form the reception sig uh, signal that's why you will see that there is a receiver sensitivity the minimum receiver sensitivity that signal should be received at that level else it would be discarded so there are many terms which come so first we need to understand these things so i have shown you through this simulator all these things you can also done it by yourself using that okay so this is a free uh, simulator available on site wavelength and amplitude so these are the common uh, as i said amplitude is amount of energy or power in the wave common measurement units of amplitude are watts millivolt decibel to millivolt as the power of uh, uh, wi-fi signal is very low so we generally use millivolt millivolt uh, or dbm to represent wi-fi signals frequency it is the time amount the measured in 1 hertz 1000 hertz 1 million hertz inversionally proportional to wavelength phase it's a relationship between two or more signal that share the same frequency okay so today i kept this session very small just because these are the very important and basic thing which we have to be understand before going further because rf is the thing first we need to understand if we want to be correlate all other sessions with the uh, in the wi-fi because wi-fi is majorly related to signaling transmission reception and all these things so you should understand the basics there first then we should proceed further on other sessions so today's uh, questions a wave is divided into degrees how many degrees make up a complete wave the height or power of wave is known as what phase frequency amplitude wavelength a standard measurement of frequency is called what milliwatt watt kilohertz hertz okay so i am ending up today's session so next session we will discuss uh, about the rf further points that various type of uh, frequency uh, behaviors absorption diffraction reflection all these points which is